just a second good morning afternoon and evening everyone welcome to the double game week 25 pod of the fpl wire powered by dream set go i'm your host zofa and i'm joined once again by my friend big man bucket how are you doing buddy how is it to see the sun again Oh, I mean, I'm not used to waking up this early. Actually, I'm still half asleep, <laughs> but uh, it was nice. I mean, I, I went to sleep last night in a in a good, joyful mood. I had shot our captain. He saved my week. I, otherwise, I had, you know, a very poor week. I didn't have De Bruyne. I uh, didn't have Ramsdale as well, actually. So very grateful for Jota's points and a uh, very slight uh, rank drop for me from like 22 to 23K. So I'll, I'll take that any, any day of the week. How about you, Pranil? Oh, frustrating game week for me. Uh, I had, uh, I mean, a decent score, but 63 minus four. I got in Kane and Dean, both of whom didn't uh, perform. I actually joined the boys at above average FPL for a live stream. I was so hopeful with Foden, uh, Cancelo, Kane captain, Babies, and Dean, and none of them really performed. And I do actually want to talk about a little uh, lesson that is learned here in terms of, honestly, you know, when you're playing this game and when you're playing your F- playing FPL, you know what your real instinct is. And I'm talking about experienced FPL players. We've been playing this game for a really long time. In my head, I knew that Liverpool are going to dominate Leicester and Jota was the right captaincy call for instinct. And then I started sort of telling myself a story that, you know what, Kane is going to hog the majority of the points if Spurs do score. That said, you're expecting Liverpool to control a game more than you're expecting Spurs to control a game uh, against Saints. And uh, I started making myself a diff- believe a different story which wasn't what instinct was and just something i need to be mindful of in the future i, I don't think it was it was necessarily a bad call i mean even if you look at the game uh, spurs had plenty of chances to score game created a big chance for region who should have scored he himself yeah. had a big chance so i mean I, I think you were unfortunate i think this is a bit of hindsight coming into play because I, 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 like I saints just... saints had been leaky saints had been leaky at the back so i mean i didn't own sun or ken and i uh, and I did think that, you know, either of them could haul big. So, I, I think it was a perfectly good captaincy. Option. It was a good call. There was there was no problem with the call. And uh, I'm not talking outside of hindsight. It's just as a manager, I knew where my instinct was. And I decided to move against it. And it's a fine line. There's a very thin line when it comes to close decisions like this. So, just something I want to reiterate and reinforce to myself. That's all. Fair enough. Should we kick off? Yeah. How about your weeks off? Um, I don't know. Okay, 75 points. 50 points just last night. Ramsdale, Jota, and Trent. So up from 29 to 26. Big jump back was 52 the day before. So ups and downs. Yeah, I was in an exactly inverse position. I was sitting on 18K two game weeks ago, uh, down to 40K now. But uh, I think we're going to see lots of swings. It's all tight. And now the the next three, four weeks, as we're going to talk about, I think are going to be potentially season-defining. And let's start off first by talking about our sponsors. (laughs) Dreamset Go is India's first sports travel and experiences platform offering a range of premium end-to-end authentic experiences across football, cricket, tennis, F1, rugby and golf, among others. From matchday hospitality to VIP stadium tours, from private meet and greet greet with athletes and legends to exclusive access to the training sessions, Dreamset Go curates the most fulfilling sports travel packages for fans like you. And all the stats that you see on our podcast are from the Fantasy Football Scout members area. Uh, we think it's really, really useful, especially for this uh, condensed fixture schedule that we have, where we have double game mix up on double game mix. If you aren't a member already, please click on the link in the description below. Become a member. I think it's well worth your many money. And uh, let's get right into it, Zof. Right. So if you're watching this pod, you probably know already that there is a double game week this week for Manchester United and Brighton. News just dropped yesterday that Burnley are also going to have a double in 27. Leicester, who was supposed to blank, have a fixture now scheduled against Burnley in 27. So the Clarets will be the only side to have the double in 27. And now they have back-to-back doubles in 26. So does this change your strategy at all, Bakar? Your initial chip strategy? I, I don't think so, uh, to be honest, because uh, like I think more than more than this uh, news of the Burnley double coming up, I think Martinelli's red last night has kind of uh, put my my plans into jeopardy because I was all set on getting Martinelli and and Saka. I don't own any Arsenal, and I thought that owning Ramsdale, uh, Martinelli, and Saka was the was the way to go going forward. But not so sure whether to triple up on Arsenal anymore. I'll definitely go with. Um, 
Ramsdale and Saka. Uh, whether or not I go for that third option, I'm not so sure. But I, I mean, I, it still might be uh, worth going for the third Arsenal player just because they have a possibility of doubling again in 28. Um, so as of now, I, I'm still leaning towards free hitting in, in 27, despite the fact that I have only one left. I think there's m- more upside to it um, than playing it in 30, uh, simply because I, I, I feel that um, playing uh, navigating 26 and 27 without a free hit could be suboptimal. Right, so just to bring you guys up to speed, what you see over here on Lego Mane sticker, he's put the Arsenal doubles in 29, no, sorry, 28 and 29. We think it could be scheduled during that week. They could have back-to-back doubles, but Planet GM, Planet F, sorry, what's the name? Yeah, Planet FPL James. James from Planet FPL. Yeah, I don't know how to brain fart. It's too early. <laughs> so yeah, he thinks that Chelsea will likely have that double in 28. We don't know so far about the double in 29. So we do think that either 28 or 29, Arsenal are going to double. So that's what really is a big factor here. Pranil, does the Burnley thing you change your plans at all? Nope. Uh, because they do have the quantity of games and I'm uh, going to be ignoring them in game week 26 and probably just uh, get a player or two in game week 27 because if the quality of the doubles isn't that strong. In uh, 26, they play Brighton away and Spurs at home. And in 27, which is a much better looking double, it's Palace away and Leicester at home. So uh, I'm going to be likely free hitting in 27. What really reinforced the free hit in 27 for me this week was uh, Everton's performance against Newcastle. They were horrible. Just the guys who are playing for Everton at the back, the names on their Sure, they're not good defenders and I think City are going to absolutely obliterate them and I want at least a double City attack in that game week and that's the primary reason why I'm looking to double in 27. Completely agree. I can field 11 players but a lot of them I don't think will be very good players. I'd have to feed the double Watford strikers away to United, stuff like that. So I think it's pretty much set in stone. And the Burnley news actually lets you get like Pope, Weghorst, stuff like that. There's upside there as well. I do I do want to I do want to mention though that this is just a case in which all three of us have teams which are suited to free hitting in game week 27. You know, there are other people who've already used one free hit chip and have one pending, etc. as well. I don't think it's necessary to free hit in 27. I think you can get away without free hitting in 27. There might be better opportunities in the future. Uh, I mean the game week 30 uh Fixture schedule doesn't really look good on paper at the moment. But there is more to game in, gain in terms of net points. So if you're sitting on 0, 1 or 2 players in game week 30 at the moment, that's the week I would target to put my free hit, play, play my free hit chip in because it depends on the composition of your team primarily, most yeah. first and foremost. So, I mean, it's yeah. not that we are advocating uh, a free hit in 27 as a pod. It's just what our teams are more suited for at the moment. Correct. Brunel, I, I have uh, like one free hit left, so I'm in a similar predicament to what, what you're suggesting. But I have, uh, but I, because I want to attack the um, the double in 26 and, and then again, possibly in 28 or 29, I'll, I'll at least have three Arsenal players. I already have Dean. So I believe I, I have enough time to set myself um, up for game week 30 without free hitting. I am personally more. Um, undecided between free hit in 33 and, and 27 because I think 33 could be a good potentially be a good time to play it as well when the FS uh, Cup semi-finalist play and some some of the lesser teams might uh, might be doubling so that is something I have in mind I mean I like Zoff said I, I have enough to field you know eight or nine players but then that would include you know King, Dennis etc so I'm not really sure how beneficial that would be so I have to sort of weigh that up and like I'm not really sure which which way to go, whether to free hit in 27 or 23. As it stands, I think I'm gonna, uh, you know, lean towards free hitting in 27, just because of the fact that I I'm kind of hoping that in the in the later stages of the FA Cup, the top teams uh, draw against each other and maybe some some get eliminated, and that makes it easier for me to navigate uh, 33. We jump into the fixtures, boys. Yep. Right. Dude, should we start? Let's have a look at the start of the preview rather than look back at the weekend. Let's start first. I want to dedicate more time to the obvious double teams, Manchester United and Brighton. Let's start off with Man United. Pranil. What's your take? What is the state of play there? Mm, I think uh, we've been unfortunate in the past two games, whether it was the Boro tie or the uh, league game as well. What's happened is actually we played really good football. I think as a team, we're improving. I like the setup that... Uh, 
Ralph has uh, done with the team. Pogba coming back has been a huge difference because we do have more control in the games that we're playing in uh, at the moment. It's just that we are not able to sustain them and we are not able to finish our chances. It's ridiculous how we didn't finish our chances against Poro. We should have had at least six or seven goals in that game. It did my head. And uh, similarly, in the first half against Burnley as well, we had or for good chances to close the game. It shouldn't have been how it was. Once we gave them an opening, game state changed the game and then we weren't able to sustain any momentum in the last 30-40 minutes. Uh, but my prediction is that Saints are going to be a tough opposition. Brighton are going to be a tough opposition. But it's the kind of opposition that United likes to play against. Uh, you know, these teams like to play their own football. And uh, we've got fast pacey wingers who are both slowly coming into form. Both Sancho and Rashford are improving by the game, especially in the last two or three weeks. So I think it should uh, suit us and uh, suit our attackers. And uh, I think if you own Bruno, hands down the best captaincy option from the United. But I think Ronaldo's stock has gone up as a captaincy option from last week to this week, especially because Cavani wasn't that good. Uh, against Burnley. He didn't have much of an impact. He did a lot of closing down, etc. as well, but he didn't have that much of an impact. So I do get do expect Ronaldo to get at least 120, 150 minutes in the two uh, game weeks combined because I'm expecting, expecting him to be rested against Leeds United before the uh, Champions League game. So uh, I was not as bullish on Ronaldo as a captaincy option maybe 10 days ago, but after what went down and after the way... Because Cavani and Ronaldo are going to rotate in our current new 4-3-3 setup, I think if you have Ronaldo, I'd be confident captaining him now. I'm actually a little more worried about not owning Ronaldo now than I was seven or eight days ago. So in your positions off, I think it's not that uh, different between Bruno and uh, Ronaldo as captaincy options. I'd be quite comfortable just uh, giving Ronaldo the armband now. Uh, when it comes to uh, defence, uh, our defenders... Our defense isn't really good. But if you're looking for a punt, the punt that I'd recommend from our defense is Luke Shaw at the moment. Uh, I know Dalo is 4.5, etc. But Shaw is just a much more superior player. He's just much more involved in play. He's actually playing as a midfielder on that left-hand side. And he's uh, making a lot of darting runs. In fact, Bruno, Sancho and uh, Shaw, who are dictating play on that left-hand side, they are responsible for creating a lot of chances. Most of the play that is coming, most of the attacking impetus that is coming for United is coming from that... Uh, left-hand side where these three players are playing. So, if you're looking for a punt in defence, Shaw is the one I'd recommend. And if you're looking for a punt in attack, what's happening is, uh, since Rashford is playing on the right and not on the left, uh, Rashford is just making a lot more off-the-ball runs. And uh, I think uh, I mentioned this in the last pod as well. There's going to be a lot more scope for these off-the-ball runs against the kind of opposition that is Saints and Brighton who like to keep a slightly higher line. So I do expect uh, Bruno and Pogba, now there are two creative midfielders in our team and Sancho is being fairly creative as well, to play a few balls to Rashford behind the last line of defence. And I'm expecting, if you're looking for an exciting punt for the double, Rashford is somebody I'd recommend. Sancho is playing really well on the left-hand side, but I don't think uh, he's got... The role in his team is not... As a finisher or as a... Uh, it's more of a creative role that he has. And if you're looking for a creative role, I mean, Bruno is involved in absolutely everything. He was a little... It's worth mentioning that he was a little deeper in the game against Burnley than he was against Boro. Boro, he was pretty much second striker, which wasn't the case uh, in Burnley. That did come deep. But everything that we're doing, which is good, is coming through Bruno. Bruno has the license to put those through balls, to take those uh, high-risk, uh, low-percentage balls and give it behind. So, Bruno, good option. Ronaldo, if you own... Cap comfortable captaincy, puns are Shaw and Rashford coming from it. So before I come to you, Bakar, I just want to quickly go through the stats. Then we can discuss it further. This is for the last four matches for all Man United players. Bruno is top for expected goal involvement. He's created 16 chances. But what's interesting is he has taken only four shots inside the box in four matches. That's I don't really like that. It is XG is quite low. XG is only 0 0.9 across these four matches. And like you said, United's numbers are actually pretty good. XG non-penalty-wise, they are third. 7.31 only behind Spurs and Liverpool. And Bruno's numbers in terms of chances created, they're actually the highest in the league. No midfielder has created more chances over this period. So, Bakar, now you have both Ronaldo and Bruno. Who are you looking to captain? Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. Um, you, you mentioned that Bruno's high up there for chances created, but I mean, his XA is is still low. It's expected assists. So I'm, I'm not really sure how, how much to, to read into that. Um, I, I think statistically, Ronaldo is is the better option when you compare the two on paper, even ever since Aranik has, has taken over. 
Uh, United have been underwhelming, but Ronaldo still has uh, the best XG per 90 among forwards behind Kane. So, I mean, his stats are still okay. It's not as if, you know, his stats are, are too bad. Um, I, I really do think United will, will do well against Southampton in terms of attack, for sure. That's just one fixture I really like. Southampton, um, they're actually worse for XG conceded in the past 10 game weeks. And I saw conceded. that Spurs games to buckle. Southampton were incredible. They dominated Spurs. Such, yeah, I know, but they still give away. They still give away chances. I mean, it, I, I think it will. Both teams will score, and United will probably score two or more. And, and I expect Southampton to score as well. I expect it to be maybe two all, three two, either way, something like that. So let's see how it goes. I, I like the fixture for attack. I think if you own someone like a De Bruyne and don't own Ronaldo, it's an easy swap to Fernandez for captaincy. I definitely think having at least one one of Bruno or, or Ronaldo is is required this week. Similarly, if you don't um, have a route to Bruno and you have enough funds in the bank to um, like Calvert Lewin or Antonio to to Ronaldo, I would definitely do that as well. I think that's a good move for for this double game week. I'm not so sure who who I'd captain between the two because I'm in a in a position where I own both, and I I really don't think there's much to split them. As of now, I'm on Ronaldo simply because he's better statistically, but I I think that could change. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Um, Ex- if you had to pick one, which which way would you go, uh, Pranel? Bruno. Expected minutes are higher. Ex- I expect Bruno to play 180 minutes. I expect him to play both the games. He doesn't really get subbed off for as well. Uh, the United team is a Rannick team at the moment, so I'd go Bruno. Just because you I, don't I, expect I see Ronaldo, Ronaldo to get subbed? I, I do, exactly. So if Ronaldo does come off, if he's tired against this opposition, Kamani is going to be coming in for him. That's the reason why uh, if I owned between the two, uh, I would captain Bruno, but I wouldn't uh, switch your entire plan to make sure that you're getting Bruno in your team. I think Ronaldo is a fine captaincy option. If you own both, go Bruno. So the, a question that is relevant. Ronaldo has, hasn't been subbed off even once under Rani yet. This, yeah, but, um, in the, but the, schedule is, the schedule is tight now, right? We are playing two games and two midweeks back to back. The most important game is right at the end where we are playing Madrid away, which uh, I'm expecting Ronaldo to start in. So I do expect his minutes to be ma- managed. This is a Saturday, Tuesday yeah. schedule this yeah. time in the double. So that's yeah. the closest thing yeah. possible. So I think a question... What about Yusuf? I, I assume you're getting Bruno in this week, right? So the tricky part is I can't afford Salah without a hit after the grey injury. So what I'm thinking, and I'm sure a lot of people have this issue. Do you go Salah this week or do you bring in Bruno this week if you need especially a captaincy option? Now, I understand if you don't own Ronaldo, it's a little, sorry, if you own Ronaldo, it's a little bit easier. You can skip Bruno possibly. But if you don't own either, I think it's worth... Skipping Salah for one week and getting in Bruno to captain. For sure. He likes playing these teams. Both Southampton and Brighton. I checked it up. He's got a great record against them as well. He likes playing against press-heavy opposition because that gives him the flexibility to play those balls, etc. as well. He's, he's always making games. He's got great game sense as well. So even though, you know, statistically he might not have high XG, XA numbers, he does know when the right moment is to play that ball or to make that run uh, inside the box as well. So... Uh, I wouldn't look too much into that. Um, I'd be confident as a Bruno. Yes, and the thing is, I've got scars, I think, just from the last game week. Even if I could get Salah and Vanu, I think I'd get Bruno first, just for the <clears> insurance. <throat> but I think in terms of EO, Bruno is going to be higher than Ronaldo, from what I saw from the weekend in terms of ownership. So, even if I don't captain, I want him in there as just insurance. The and uh, if and just just uh, one thing I want to be mindful about, just uh, you know, if you have your captaincy option in place, and if you're looking to free hit in 27, then you don't really need to buy a United defender or something. For this double, both Southampton and Brighton are good attacks; they're good teams. And the fixtures after 27 for United don't read well, so it's probably a transfer that you're booking down the line. Spot on. And if you're looking to free yeah. hit also, then like by the time you can probably sell your United players, free hit them in for Watford, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can plan accordingly. Anything else to touch upon here? Let's. I think you already mentioned Sancho, Rashford. So who do you I punt think. be if you have to go across, like you know, apart from the usual guys? Who's your punt? Sancho, Rashford, Rashford, Rashford. For sure, Rashford. I think these games suit him. I think he's. Uh, I mean, contrary to popular opinion, and I actually like Rashford on the right compared to the left because what happens on the left is he's got tunnel vision. He only looks at the goal, looks to dribble past a couple of players and shoot, which is what he's also doing on the right. But also what he's effectively doing on the right hand side is he's, Ralph is using him as a decoy. He's making a lot of off the ball runs, uh, which is something he's not doing on the left hand side, which is why I expect him to be get behind the last line of defense on a few occasions. And I think he's the punt to go for. He's got that explosive quality about him as well. He had a good couple of shots against uh, Brighton as well. Pope made some good saves. I think they were underrated serves because they were fast, low and in the corner. Uh, so Rashford is the punt I'd go for. 
you know, Bakar, anything to add on United? No. Cool. Let's just touch upon Brighton. I know there's not really much to cover over here. In terms of the attackers in top of expected goal involvement, you have Mepu, then McAllister, Trossard, Gross, etc. Do you think it's worth moving one of the Watford forwards for Mopai this week? I, I don't think so. Uh, simply because I'm not sure that either um, Mope or you know Welbeck or McAllister are likely to play both games. Uh, Potter likes to rotate, um, especially in the tougher games. He might see United as a tough fixture and decide to rotate, especially away from home. So I, I don't think it's worth swapping the Watford forwards. I know they've been poor and, and, and they don't look like scoring a goal at all, but, but I still think they're worth keeping for 26. Yeah, I'm trying to find different things to discuss for Brighton, but I'm struggling. <laughs> what, what, worth mentioning though, you know that if you're bri- buying a Brighton asset and you're not free hitting in 27 because you don't have a team suited for free hitting in 27, the fixtures do read good for the midterm. They've got Watford United now in 25, Burnley at home after, Aston Villa at home after, and Newcastle away uh, after that. So that's that's a good run of five fixtures. So it isn't a bad investment, and. Uh, more than the attackers. I mean, if you're looking at the attackers, it's Mope and Trossard. And it, it, it's a shot in the dark and a bit of hope and optimism and playing the fixtures is all. But I think the fixtures coming later for the mid-price assets are better. I'd much rather go Rafinha a week later than I'd go Trossard, Trossard this week, for example. Yeah. Uh, and uh, But I do want to say that if you're going for a Cucurella or a Lewis Dunk or a Sanchez right now to capitalize on this double, I don't really mind it. Just one thing to mention on Kukurella, he might be playing in the back three now. So after this whole burn, that's, I think that's what happened in the last game. They had March play on that side. So I think Kukurella's appeal has gone down a little bit because he's not going to be bombing forward as much. And I'm guessing that's going to affect his bonus point potential as well. Yep. And also, just worth monitoring out because a lot of our listeners like to punt on Lamptey. He's not nailed at the moment. His minutes are mm-hmm. going to be management. Don't go there. As much as we like him to be an option and we want him to be an option, I mean, he can start one game and, uh, you know, get an assist on a clean sheet, but he's not going to be serving you well for the midterm. I don't think he's a nailed player. Right. And I think we have to pick and choose our battles a little bit, right? Because a lot of teams now effectively have, especially if we're going to free hit in 27, the same number of fixtures over the next two weeks. So maybe if it doesn't, right. your player doesn't have a double this week, he has a double the next week. So take a longer term view rather than piling in on this double game week in particular. Let's now go have a look at the other fixtures. Yep. Newcastle, Everton. Bakar, anything to talk about here? Uh, Just the fact that Newcastle are now looking much decent going forward with some of the new signings. Um, They had an XG of over 2.5. I'm not sure whether it's it's down to the fact that Newcastle themselves are that good or Everton are that terrible, but... But uh, the first thought in my mind is that uh, Lucas Dean's fixture this week uh, at uh, away to Villa, uh, away to Newcastle, doesn't look as appealing as it looked a week ago. So I, I expect Newcastle to score in that fixture. As the second uh, implication I see from this is the fact that Everton are looking really poor and they're a fixture to target for uh, when they play Man City, especially in in game week 27. I think that's a fixture where um, uh, where the City boys could go big. Spot. Yeah, Zoff and me were discussing and the, the joke that we made is when uh, Lampard meets Michael Keane, it's uh, just a lot of fun for the opposition. That's They're all. going to concede from <laughs> every set piece. Even at Chelsea, yeah. set piece defending was a nightmare. So let's yeah. let's move on swiftly. Anything no, no, this just, I think, yeah, just worth touching on that the fact that they're going to concede a few goals, which they are, might be good for their attackers. Uh, you know, which is why DCL and whoever turns out, good morning, Bakar. Uh, DCL and whoever else. Uh, turns I'm sure this is the first time it will happen. An attack. I think there'll be good options eventually when the fixtures play out in favor of Everton. I wouldn't mind going for the attackers because uh, Zoff, he does get something out of them. Definitely. And I think he's found his calling at this level. I think that Everton level of playing with. Uh, players who have potentially, I think he does have the ability to in him to re- make those attackers reach their potential. Completely agree. Spot on. Yeah. A lot of managers have Damari Gray. What what would you do in, in, in their position? I mean, he's injured. You sell, right? I mean, yes, but I I mean, there's also a case of holding him for one week and maybe Going deferring to the transfer to Saka yeah. for another week. Yeah, that's what I'd do. I would try to find a way to play Rafinha right now because Rafinha plays Everton. And that's an explosive, explosive fixture for yeah. Rafinha this that's week. That's a good shot. You can move him to someone uh-huh. else like Rafinha who has a double next week. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. West, West Ham, Watford. 
both sides were I saw this game in entirety the both sides were abysmal what 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 offered something I thought they were definitely improved they look a completely unrecognizable side from what we saw two to three game weeks ago they're very organized he played a flat four in midfield flat back four very defensive but I think in the next few games now with teams around them picking up points they have to go a bit more attacking Watford the next games in Brighton yep. I don't not minding owning the strikers for the double in particular I don't think they're that bad yeah, similarly, as a Foster owner, I'm quite happy to own him now because uh, Why Being Why has void up Watford. And uh, uh, I think our perception in terms of how we look at Watford in terms of our attackers against them, I think the attraction has gone down maybe about 10% or because what Hodson does know how to organize a team. Hodson does know how to set them up to defend. And we're already seeing that happening at Watford. In terms of West Ham, yeah. everything went through Bowen Antonio. Invisible. Completely. If you need to move him on, definitely move him on from another double game week, guys. Even with the Leicester and Newcastle fixtures coming, I think there's simply better options out there now. Yeah. Burnley Pretty. United, we've already touched upon United. I want to... Go ahead. Yeah, go on. I do want to talk about Vegas because I saw this full yeah. game Only. and he was quiet in the first 35-40 minutes but in the second half he came into his own and gave us so much trouble. What I realized, I didn't realize he had so much quality on the ball. I haven't seen him play too much uh, and uh, you have to be a decent player to score 20 odd goals and nine assists uh, in the Bundesliga and that showed that came through with all his touches even that volley that he took with Dege almost saved which went to the bottom left corner that showed that he's got good technique he's got good quality on the ball and uh, everything that Burnley did which was decent his off the ball runs were really really good as well he was you know certain strikers have that knack to find space he he had that knack to find space so at 6.5 I think he's going to be in Somebody we are going to be looking at very, very soon. Uh, so, uh, if you're buying a Burnley attacker, more so than Cornetto, I'd be looking at uh, Vegost. Quality Espe- player. Especially if you're not going to free hit in 27, I think he's probably the number one pickup now. Yep. Agreed. With all, I think sub-7, because you know, Edward we saw, there's a bit of a rotation risk. Anyway, we'll get to that. Let's just quickly yeah. touch upon Burnley defence. I think Pope is obviously a solid option. Burnley, I think, are back to burnley again. But yeah, they are definitely a lot more organized. I think in terms of defense, it's probably just the center backs. Because the full backs, I'm not confident they don't get rotated with so many games close. Yeah. I'm not Nasha. sure about even the center backs, though, because uh, you know, when you have the likes of Trent Cancelo, etc., maybe an Arsenal defender as well in play, I, I'd still possibly back them over Burnley, even if they have an extra fixture or something. Spot on. The back it's easier to go to Pope rather than get a Burnley defender. Spotted. Shout out to our friend Ivan, uh, though, uh, FPL Rouser, who mentioned that uh, they're double in 27. They play Palace and Leicester. Both of them are terrible at defending set pieces. So, you know, if you're punting on a defender in 27, on maybe going earlier as well, you wouldn't mind going on one of their yeah. uh, center backs in hope of getting lucky. That's a decent shot. Early thoughts, but uh, which one are you targeting in, in 27? I'm assuming Pope, Weghorst, any other or just the two? Tarkowski. I don't know. Early, I want to watch a bit of them play, but Vegas, I think, pretty sure he'd be in my Vegas Pope and maybe one of Tarkowski or me because they played different roles last year. Last year, Tarkowski was the one who had the knockdown and me was closer to goal. I have to see whether that's how they're still playing. I think those fixtures are uh, are better for attack without than their defense. I, I think they're prob- they're going to concede in both, to be honest. I think Corne and, and Vegas is, is a better combo. Possibly. Than getting two defenders and, and Weghorst. We have a few more games now to judge that. We have, we have some more sample yeah, size by see. now. City, Brentford. Did either of you guys watch this? Doesn't look like no, I, I just had Foden from this game and, and I didn't have De Bruyne, so I, I couldn't go through the pain of watching De Bruyne against Brentford. <laughs> I think, let's just quickly, rather than talk about this game, let's talk about now the Norwich fixture that's coming. And if you're holding Man City assets like Foden, De Bruyne, etc. I think the defenders are an easy key, but what about their attacking assets? Do you move them on for the double game week, guys, or do you hold them through this period? Pranil? I'm holding Foden for this game uh, because i not getting into Actually, I, I don't have enough in the bank to do uh, Foden to a United attacker. I would have beat... If I, if, I, if I had enough in the bank to maybe punt on a Rashford in this game week, just upgrade a little and then move to whoever you want later, it might be a good option. Uh, outside of that, I wouldn't I don't see a midfielder I want to change Foden for. I'm happy to keep him. He, he was subbed off uh, pretty early in the game as well. You know, he had 20 minutes off. So I am expecting him to play against Norwich as well. So no hurry to sell him. 
I'm, I'm if you have De Bruyne yeah. now, and, and if you don't have Bruno, I think I'd make that I'd move. move. Uh, definitely, because I think yeah. KDB is the one I'm a little bit worried about because he played the FA Cup, played Brentford, and he did definitely want him up to full speed for the Athletic game. Would you hold KDB through this period, Bakar? I think we lost Bakar's connection. Bakar, yes, Bakar, we... Yeah, would you hold yeah. KDB through this period? No, I, I was scouring through the city forums, and the significant majority of them, uh, of the fans, they think that Gundogan is is likely to come in. They think he's a uh, more than a competent replacement for for the um, Norwich fixture. And when you look at KDB's minutes, he started in the cup. Now he's played ninety against Brentford. Now after this week, they have um, Sporting in 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 the UCL, and then Spurs in the league. So I think this Norwich fixture is the ideal hotspot for rotation especially because he played 90 minutes. I, I think he's going to be rested in this fixture and I'd look him. I'd look to move him on for uh, either Salah or Bruno. Uh, as far as Ford is concerned, I, I think he's an easy keep just for the reasons you mentioned. Um, in my case, I'll, I'd be selling him for Saka next week and I want an Arsenal mid, so that's an easy transfer for me. Uh, another implication I'd like to point out here is the fact that Cancelo could possibly be rested this week. I think there's a good possibility of this happening. Um, Walker uh, and, and Zinchenko were on the bench in, in the Brentford fixture and uh, Walker is suspended in the UCL. So I, I'd expect Walker to definitely play in the UCL. So there is a chance that Cancelo could be benched against Norwich and Walker and Zinchenko could play there. So in that case, I'd be a bit mindful of your bench. So make sure you have enough playable defenders because I think the bench could could come into play. Like me and Zoff own Livermento. He doesn't have the best of fixtures, but at least he's likely to play uh, you know, he's, he he was rested against Spurs. Um, uh, he his little did say that he played 90 in the cup, which is why he, he didn't play. So that's it's something to be mindful of that, you know, the bench could come into play. Spot. What monitoring, what, what, what mentioning though that uh, Walker Peters has been really good for Saints. And I thought Perod also had a really, really good game against Spurs as well. So I don't know if Livramento is as nailed as he was probably in the early parts of the season because both the fullbacks are in form and they're playing pretty well. So I just mentioned that spot on and in terms of Cancelo as well just I mean it has no FPL implication whatsoever because everybody owns him and nobody's going to sell him but how many shots did he have in that Brentford game I thought six Cancelo six, captains six shots four in the box. Were, were a little unlucky because he could have easily had a goal in that game he was shooting on site just, just dribbling everything that you like in to the see box from. and everything it yeah. was crazy yeah hey man Trent are just on another level in terms of defensive assets anything else from this game boys I completely agree with what you said on De Bruyne and Foden. Should we move on? Yep. Norwich Palace. Norwich getting better. Still signs of that. In terms of Palace, we saw Olise rotated. Do you think that's a thing going forward? Not Olise, sorry. I'm out of it this morning. Edward. 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 Edward, Edward. Edward getting rotated. No, I think uh, what will also impact was the result against Norwich as well. I think the, the fact that they had a one-all draw uh, works in uh, Edward's favour. So if you do own him already, I don't think you cut your losses immediately. You hold him, play him through through the double and hope to get lucky. Because what's happening with Vieira is, is that it's a horses for courses approach and he's got so many options in attack at the moment. That's why there's a bit of rotation and he plays as per opposition. Uh, but uh, if you already own Edward, uh, I wouldn't rush to sell him. Anything to add here, Bakar? Let's move on. Let's not Bakar... I, I, I think I th- I think that Norwich um, they've improved defensively, but uh, but I still think they're a good fixture to target for clean sheets. I I don't think they have the quality going forward. Their xG in, in recent games has been fairly low, so there's irrespective of their improvement, I still think they're a good team to target for clean sheets. Good Spurs Southampton. Pranil, you saw this one. Why don't you lead us? I thought Southampton were really really good. They had Spurs spin backed. That said, Bucker was right. They did concede. A fair few amount of big chances. Uh, I don't know how Kane missed that header on the far post. It should have gone in. I don't know how Reguilon missed that chance that Kane created for him as well. Uh, but uh, it's a shame that Saints don't have a double any time because it's, there's no doubt in my head that Broja is the best uh, value forward pick in the game at the moment. Uh, I think Saints will continue to score goals. I think they're finding themselves as a team. Ralph mentioned in his, mentioned in his post-match presser as well. You know, he was sounding confident that everybody in his team knows exactly what they're supposed to do. Those, those are signs of a team that is in good nick that all the players know what they're doing and I'm worried about that game against United. I wouldn't be surprised if he managed to drop points in that game. They're looking good. Uh, their options 
in attack are good and that's about it there's a bit Saints, of a uh, sorry spurs uh i do want to mention that uh, kane and son if you own them happy to own them for the double as well they did show enough in attack i was a little uh, I, i didn't like the fact that benton ku didn't start from the start because i think he's an upgrade in terms of the, what he offers in midfield compared to the other players we already saw that and i do want to highlight one defender who i think is a good pick despite what happened in terms of uh, spurs conceding three goals and that's uh, romero uh, we already know that he's a bonus bonus points monster because of how much of an all action defender he is his passing passing range is so good there are he played three or four balls which cut through that saints defense and found that last I love that, and he was very, very uh, involved in the set plays as well. Uh, he had a goal chalked off for offside as well, and he assisted Bergwijn's goal as well, uh, which was chalked off for offside as well. So um, I do expect him to be in the involved in the set pieces as well. I like him in a, as an asset at 4.8 million in the midterm, because they do for people that are not free hitting in 27, they do have a double in 26, and they do have a fixture in 27, and decent fixtures right under 29. So I like him as a pick, and that's what Baker endorsed it as well. In terms of the Spurs asset, because with the wing backs, there's a bit of rotation to be expected. Only the caveat is Romero; he's, he loves the card. He's going to get Agreed. booked almost Agreed. every other game. Villa leads. So much happened this game. I think it was three two in the first half. Something like that. Coutinho three and three. No, yeah, no, three two. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, three two. Is, is Ramsey a perma play now? Ah. Oh. <laughs> that stuff actually is off. I, I, so. I, I, yeah, I, I agree as well. You know, um, it's 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 like it's very easy to be um, carried away by the price, and you, you look, he's only four point seven, so he's not really playable in in a lot of fixtures. But when you actually look at the numbers under Gerrard, he's actually top for big chance involvements. He has six as compared to Watkins, who's second with four. So his numbers are decent. It's not as if. Um, Uh, he's not posting good numbers and he's just getting lucky he's getting he's playing as part of the midfield three and making those late runs in in the box i'm sure gerard has something to do with that because he's uh, his runs have improved significantly ever since he's he's been become manager so i think he's a he's a good option to own and the good thing i like about him is that he allows for you know significant up, upgrades elsewhere in the squad Also, Zoff, when you're thinking about how uh, Aston Villa play, uh, there's no target man in that team, right? So, how because of how busy and because of the movement of Bundia, Coutinho, and Watkins, who aren't exactly central strikers, they occupy those defenders, which does leave space opened up for Ramsey when he's making those runs uh, through. And he does have that Lampard style sense in terms of when to actually make that run. He's got that good footballing brain uh, on his head. So, yeah, I think he's a good option. Yeah, if I was, I think Coutinho now- is also a. Re- Really, really good option. Definitely. I mean, we spoke about him, and it's something that you spoke about, Zof, where you said that we have tunnel vision in terms of just looking at doublers. Where we spoke about Villa and picked them up a few weeks ago, but not really jumped on them. Sorry, I cut you. Go on. No, no problem. I said I completely agree in terms of Ramsey today. If I was wild carding, I'd make plans because you can afford a lot more heavier defense. You can afford more heavy hitters and stuff like that. And there is a bit of price bias there. If you were same thing six million, I think we'd be a lot more confident buying him just because he's been underpriced and he's a breakthrough player like Kane in his debut season. I was very late on Kane for that very reason because it was looked at him like maybe just like you know this is a budget guy he can't sustain it, etc. etc. So yeah, Leeds. I want to talk also, about. What... Go ahead. Yeah, Leeds. How 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 did Danny Hamas find that finish? That first goal was so good and so well taken. Where did that come from? Where was exactly, that at United? I have no idea. He is exactly what I wanted to talk about, and I think he's gone a bit under the radar, right? He's been playing out of position. Bamford is the Pokemon that never evolves. His fitness is permanently just <laughs> evolving. <laughs> so I really <laughs> think James now he the number of big chances he's getting at the spirit of that attack. I was just having a look at this price this morning when I saw that Martinelli is injured. It's just out of my budget, but I think at six million, he's not a bad replacement for the likes of Gray and stuff. I've seen him a lot at United, and his best job is that he occupies defenders, which leaves space for others. I, I don't know how he pulled that finish out of his locker, uh, and uh, let's say he's a good attacker in terms of what he does for the team, but I just don't rate his finishing ability. Often. Yeah, but just at the spearhead of the Leeds attack, right? No matter who you put over yeah. there, even if you put Bentner, prime Bentner, there he would be scoring twenty goals a season there. I think. Yeah, I just think it'd be too frustrating because they're eventually going to own Rafinha as well, and he's the reason Rafinha isn't as good a pick as he should be, because he's creating tons for him and he's not finishing any of them. So. Spot on, Bakar. Anything to add? Yeah. No. 
I do want to mention that uh, Leeds are back to Leeds of last year. Yeah. Their attack is as good and their defense is still there for the taking. So in terms of how we perceive them as an option, I think where we were with them last year is where we are exactly with them. Now. They're fun again. Yeah. Liverpool, Leicester. As much as Liverpool, I think Schmeichel had a good game. Salah looked very dangerous. I only saw the bits of the highlights over there when he came on. He looked like he was determined to score. Both of Jota's goals, in fact, were set-piece, right? I think second balls from set-pieces and stuff like that. But he also looked dangerous. General Robbo looked good. What do you guys... And Bakar, anything to add? Yeah, Robertson is is just that guy I, I don't think we'd ever own because because of uh, the, the triple-up we'd likely to have. Trent, uh, Jota and, and Salah. But... I, I just think it's it's still the way to go. I I got a few questions from people asking after you know after yesterday is Robertson still worth picking? I I don't know. I I I don't see a reason to sell Jota. He's just far too good. His value is insane. He's only second to Salah for actually this season. He's posting good numbers. I I'd keep him even if he misses the odd game here or there. He's he's still gonna be a great pick overall. I think it will be an yeah. interesting discussion in twenty eight if you're going to build towards not free hitting in thirty. Who do you keep in that situation? I wanted to ask Bakar, though, are you coming around to Salah being a triple captaincy option in 26 now, Bakar? <laughs> Boss. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually, I had taken a break from FPL and I, I didn't look uh, too much on Twitter. I wasn't reading Twitter for, for a long time. So I, I, I just shared my initial thoughts and I, I didn't know that, you know, it was something which was as widely discussed in the community that, you know, that previous day when the information came out. So, yeah, it made me look like a bit of an idiot, but okay. How was the break? Really nice. Thank you. What were you up to? Chilling, relaxing. What else? Less Netflixing, more chilling. <laughs> of course. Bakar, spilling nothing here, leaving it for late night. Yeah. It's for the OnlyFans account. <laughs> Right. Uh, I think it's for... obvious. I think Salah, Jota yeah. and uh, uh, Trent are your go-to guys. If you own Robo instead of uh, Jota, uh, I don't have big problems with that. But the other two are non-negotiable. Diaz looked good. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. He did. But uh, I think uh, he's, he's not an option. Neither is Mane because of Diaz at the moment. So... I don't think there's much else to discuss. I think there's only one thing I want to discuss now regarding the next upcoming fixture against Burnley. So I was having a look at Burnley's stats. They've conceded nine goals in nine home matches, right? So as bad as they've been away, they've been better at home. And Liverpool have scored 33 goals in their 11 away matches this season. City have scored 23. So we always say Liverpool are dangerous at Anfield. Liverpool are actually significantly better on the road. So... It'll be interesting, interesting to see how that pans out. I was quite surprised to see that. I did not expect that when I saw it. Leicester, shambolic, they remain a team to target. The one worth pointing out that Fofana uh, is expected to train with the first team this week. And I think he's a huge upgrade and on what they have at the back. So hopefully that uh, improves the performance at the back for Leicester because I think they've been missing him terribly so that's that i think you know we i think that this is something that might happen three or four game weeks later when leicester are obviously playing in game week 30 as well against brentford at home and our perception is that leicester, leicester are a poor team defensively and i think the big reason for that is the guys who are playing in defense and uh fofana is training this week and i expect evans to be fit around the game week 30 mark as well and if these two are playing in defense for leicester our perception should shift we shouldn't take time adjusting to the fact that there's a huge upgrade in defense later something to point out for the Spot on. But I think yeah. Rogers has lost the dressing room a bit. That's just my general vibe. Wolves Arsenal. I didn't watch any of this. I haven't even seen the highlights yet. Either of you guys catch it? Yeah, I saw the mm -hmm. highlights. Uh, I thought uh, Arsenal played... I mean, in the highlights, they looked like they had good chances. Wolves are a difficult team to play against. But they're, again, defensively, Arsenal looks solid. They didn't give Wolves too much uh, in terms of... Uh, getting many chances. Arsenal did their bit. They created a few chances. Not many. La La Lacazette had an incredible chance to finish the game off. But uh, outside of that, not much to talk about. Uh, you know, Ramsdale, good option. Centre-backs, good option. Uh, and uh, Ait Nuri is not as nailed as we think he is. Everybody has jumped on him. And uh, not just the fact that Marcel started the game against Arsenal. The fact that Johnny was on the bench as well. And he's just a really, really good player. Uh, and I'm expecting that to be a problem for Etnuri owners at the moment. 
spot on. Okay, I, I'd like to raise this question here. Now that Martinelli is injured, um, which three Arsenal options do you think are, are the ones to go for for the double? I'm assuming Ramsdale and, and Saka, obviously. So which third option would, would you guys prefer? Tierney or Gabriel are good options. I like Lacazette. Because what happens is, right, you have to also now look at the fixtures on the other side of their double. Now at 28, their fixture is, if I'm not wrong, away to Watford. I like that now for goals. Their home fixture is home to Leicester in 29. I like that for goals. So you're getting, obviously, the attacking potential from Tierney, but I think the potential for goals is a bit higher than clean sheets. Even this fixture, I think Brentford expect... is high potential for goals in 26 as well. Uh, correct. And also the fixture that is supposed to be added, what we think in 28, will be Chelsea away. That doesn't look like a clean sheet necessarily, but we've been a bit leakier. We could concede a goal. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. It sucks because I was uh, really, really looking forward to owning Martinelli. I love the player. That's my entire and, plan. And, and that incident was such a nothing incident. What happened was uh, that uh, 10 seconds, he threw the ball out for a throw in and he was just excitable and pressing and he just Nudged him a little. And I thought the second yellow was really harsh where when the ball went with the throw in, Martinelli followed that player and pushed him a little. It was a soft, soft. I think one yellow would have been enough. I thought it was a little harsh. Immature refereeing, in my opinion. Yeah. Odegaard? Not an option. I know I know we're jumping ahead. I know Arsenal is a topic for next week. But what about Odegaard? He's similar price to Martinelli. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a de- decent option. Uh, but that's what he is. He's a decent option. He's an accumulator. Mm-hmm. He might get a few assists. He might sneak in one goal, but that's what he is. What I like about Lacazette is that you can transition out of Ronaldo pretty well. Yeah. Because yeah. 28, I just, uh, I just don't know if this, this, this impacts Arsenal's attack a little because what Martin Lee offers a lot is in terms of causing chaos in the opposition defence in terms of the aggressive running that he does. Uh, so Arsenal do miss that element in their attack. ESR is going to be it's playing in game. place of him. One game, yeah. So that's that's something. Right. I think that's anything else yeah. to discuss this week, boys. We can talk about our captains and just touch upon the fixtures. I, I think week. Gabriel is again worth reiterating again because I just remember that one of the double gaming is against Brentford, who have their own problems in terms of defending set pieces as well. And Gabriel is an absolute set piece monster. So just thought I'd point that out. Definitely. Right. In terms of captaincy and fixtures for next week, I think let's just touch upon United. Let's go on to Bucker, your captain. Uh, one of Bruno or Ronaldo. I'll, I'll you can't sit on the tomorrow. fence. Sure. Pick one. Pick one. Where are you leaning? I'll, I'll probably. Uh, well, I, I, um, I think I'll go with Bruno eventually. I think I'll go with Bruno eventually because I, I think I'm a, because when I look at it, I, I really don't think there's much in it, and because I'm owning both, I think I can just go with Bruno and and, and protect my ER. I know it's not your way. It riser, but like I, I just think it's 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 the smart thing to do because I expect Ronaldo's effective ownership to be below 100 anyways. So, Pranil, you've already mentioned yeah. Bruno earlier. Sticking with that, yeah, yeah. I'm a little jealous of you, Ronaldo owners this week, though. I like to I hear think, that uh, that that sort of pushes me yeah. towards Ronaldo. What do you make of the strop he threw at the end of Burnley? Like he stormed off of the tunnel again. Do you think that affects anything? No, he's just an emotional guy on the pitch. He's uh, throwing tantrums all the time. Nothing that we haven't seen in the past few years. Yeah, fair enough. Because yeah. I, I, I'm currently on Bruno as well. I'll probably be bringing him in this week. Because I don't know Ronaldo. Even though he's been getting the shot, what in the quality of shots isn't there, and he just doesn't seem yeah. on it. He's not the same player. He's not the same player. Bruno's a superior player as the state of play is. I'm more confident about him uh, converting chances at a more efficient rate than Ronaldo at the moment. Uh, there was an excellent stat that I read since the last few, six or seven weeks. Ronaldo's had some 36 shots and he scored one goal from them. And that's what we've seen on the pitch as well. He's just not an efficient striker at the moment. If you own both, there's no doubt in my head. If you can go to one, there's no doubt in my head that Bruno is the uh, attacker to get. That's all. And I actually really fancy Rashford as a pun this week. I like Rashford. These, this is, because yeah. like you said, the, these are teams you can get behind, right? Because I do think Salisu yeah. and Dunk, they can both do a job on Ronaldo in terms of keeping him isolated. But both these teams are a bit prone to the runners from midfield. And also yeah. the counter-attacks from the wings. So, I, th- I think you've, you've gone to something there. Cool. Let's move cool. on to our teams. Let's yes. do that really quick. Yes. And then we can do a short, key, short Q&A if you guys have time. Pranil, this is your team. Yeah, can you just... Uh, okay, so I'll read it out for the listeners. I have uh, Ramsdale as my keeper. In defence, I have Trent, Cancelo, Ben Davies and Dean. In midfield, I have Bruno, Jota, Odin and Bowen. Up front, I have Kane and DCL. 
uh i'm looking to probably save this week uh, that said i do have a wedding which is long and there could be some um, you know induced decision making uh, <laughs> later in the night if i uh, tend to get free but at the moment i'm looking to save the problem that i see in my team the the We are just dropped out cool. for a couple of minutes. Cool. I think so. You mentioned your team again. Do you want to do that? Yeah, again? we're back. We're back on the stream. It's all good to go. Uh, I've mentioned my stream. I'm looking to save that transfer. And uh, the problem that I see in my uh, team in the future is uh, Ben Davies. And I really want to convert Ben Davies into Eric, uh, into Romero. Uh, and uh, I don't... I have exact money for Salah, uh, Odin, and Davies to Romero. Bruno, sorry, Bruno, Foden, and uh, Davies to Salah, Rafinha, and Romero at the moment with no wiggle room. But I think Salah is going to be rising yeah. in price very soon. So I won't There's be definitely able to price changes happening there. Yeah, yeah. So I'll see. We'll see. At the moment, I'm looking to save and then look at things next week. Right. This is my team. I've got De Gea in goal, Dean, Cancelo, Trent in defense, Jota, Bowen, Gray, and Trossard in midfield, Dennis, King, Ronaldo captain currently on the bench, Ramsdale, Saka, Livramento, and James. So I've got 7 million in the bank. I can't really grow gray to Salah directly, so that's not an option. I'll likely be going gray to Bruno. And then next week, I'm finally going to be taking a hit to bring in Salah so by downgrading most likely Ronaldo to Lacazette. The plan was to go Trossard to Martinelli or Odegaard. I could still do that, but I think there's more upside in getting rid of Ronaldo for 28, 29, etc. How much uh, cash do you have in the bank, Zoff, once you make uh, Grey to Bruno? Um, 11.7.8. I'm just wondering if I see a move for one of your Watford strikers or anything, but... It's fine. I'd be tempted, not tempted to uh, do James to Romero and then bench one of the Watford strikers. No, I want to keep James now. I think having held him for so long, I think he's going to be back, if not for 26, at least for 28 when we have Chelsea's just, good run starts. Just... Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I mean, you're already stuck on that and it's your instinct, so I don't want to talk to you. The only time. thing that might tempt me next week is Tierney for James, but then that's sort of, again, cancelling out the double game week for 28 and stuff onwards. Are you, because uh, if you're not comfortable playing both Watford strikers, I think there is potential in uh, James to Romero and getting three games in the next two game weeks instead of zero. From a Jane's point of view, it's something we're thinking. Of. Yeah, Romero. I know we discussed this earlier. Also, I just can't go for a defender that doesn't have that attacking upside. He does have attacking. upside. I know. Upside I saw what you're talking about them. the set piece yeah. thread, but yeah. Dean, like Dean, also, for example, he blanked right, but he had two good chances to, to the couple of yeah. crosses he played, taking set pieces. In terms of attack, he offered a bit. I think Romero offers a lot though, because I think at 4.8, the bonus pun potential plus the set piece potential. Plus the fact that he's got a good through ball on him, I think they add up. That's all. Just fair sure. yeah. I, I think if you're looking at his Spurs defender, Region is by far the the player to get because I think he was very very unlucky even uh, against Southampton not to get any attacking turns. Had a big chance, created a big chance, didn't get any returns. And I, I think there's a big haul coming from Region very soon. I know he could be rotated with the threat of you know Sessegnon from the bench, but um, but I, I I think he's gonna deliver in, in most fixtures when, when he starts because he's playing for a solid defense and he has great attacking numbers. This is something uh, Bakar Baker has pointed out to us on a few occasions where he said that yes, Reguilon will get those chances and he will be in the attack but he is absolutely not capable of converting these chances and he's mentioned this to us like a long, long time ago where he's just not a good finisher. Uh, where he mm -hmm. sent, uh, sent us screenshots from FP ref where he's saying that he's in the top turtle for when, when it comes to defenders getting those attacking chances, but he's bottom of the ladder when it comes to conversion rate. So just thought that yes, at least he's getting the volume, he's going to convert one, you know, one out of three, four, some, yeah. something like that. But at least he's creating chances as well. That's that's yeah. something which is encouraging. So, yeah. I mean, if he creates those kind of chances for Kane, then, then yeah. I, I think he's going to get uh, points yeah. Um, yeah. sooner rather than later. The one I'd really be excited, excited about is Doherty and after Royal's performance against Saints, I thought he was uh, susceptible to defensive mistakes on more than a few occasions yes. in that game. He wasn't really good. And Doherty has done well in a, in a couple of games before this one. So I wonder that could be the exciting punt. Bakar, your team up. Uh, I, I have to hear in goal, Trent, Dean, Cancelo, Foden, Jota, Fernandez, Bowen, Ronaldo, uh, King, Dennis. 
on the bench have Foster, Brownhill, Livermento, James. I don't think there's any reason to make a transfer. I'll, I'll save a transfer this week to set myself up for possibly three or four transfers next week where I don't have any Arsenal. I don't have Salah. Fernandez will go for Salah next week and I'll buy a uh, double or triple Arsenal, I think. Big hits next week. Cool. Let's move on. Do you guys have time to do a Q&A? Or no, you have to no I think we need to. Yeah, we, I'll need to jet. So cool. if, if you guys want to continue with the Q&A, I mean, feel free to. I'll just drop off right now. That's Bakar, okay. do you have a few minutes? I, I don't mind. I, I don't hear so. Right. I, I think let's end it. Cool. Let's end it then. No, sorry, guys. No right. Q&A this time. Yeah. Have I, I think time. it's nice that we keep it short also today. So. All right, good luck, guys, and we'll see you next week, uh, probably Tuesday okay. or Wednesday. We'll be in touch. Uh, we'll look out for our socials. Make sure you're hitting like and subscribe. We're at 17,000 subscribers now, sure. boys. So congratulations on that, and see you next week. See you next week. All right, boys. See you next week. Good luck.